more bromination reactions. So let's find another way to use radicals to add bromine to organic molecules. All right, the reaction we're gonna talk about today is the addition of HBr. Oops, HBr um, to an alkene as a radical. Okay. So let's we'll just take a very simple alkene here. Our conditions are going to be HBr. We're going to use a peroxide. I'm just going to use an R group here. You can have a lot of different R groups for your peroxide as long as you have this oxygen oxygen sigma bond. you have a peroxide, right? So peroxides are any R groups. These can be any carbon group or hydrogen, right? And then the important thing is that you have this oxygen-oxygen sigma bond because when you heat them up, heating produces hemolysis. And so you remember hemolysis from the previous uh, video. If we heat this up, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to get homolysis. So our initiation step is homolysis of the peroxide. One electron goes to this oxygen, one electron goes to this oxygen, and we get these radical pro uh, products, right? So no radical in the starting material, radical in the products. Now this should look familiar. We have two heteroatoms, two oxygens connected to each other by a sigma bond. And so when we introduce energy, in this time in the form of heat, we are going to homolyze that bond. That bond will fragment and each oxygen will get a single electron. All right, so this is very similar to what we've done before. Now what's different is what's going to happen um, with these radicals when they react with the one. Are they going to react with HBr? Are they going to react with the double bond? We have a couple of different things that they can react with. So what we get is they're going to react with HBr because HBr is the weakest, is the weaker bond, right? HBr is not a very strong bond um, because the bromine is, is very large and the hydrogen is very small. So the, the peroxide radical is going to take the hydrogen away we're going to make an alcohol and we're going to make the bromine radical, right? So far, so good. This is, this looks very similar to what happened in the previous one, right? Remember that after initiation in the previous reaction, the first thing that this radical did was go find a hydrogen to take away, uh, a hydrogen to grab. It grabbed that hydrogen and created a different radical. We're doing the same thing here, only instead of making a carbon radical, we're making a bromine radical. That bromine radical is going to react with the double bond. Okay. And this is where, so this is a new step that we haven't seen before. Now remember that the goal here is to make a stable radical, right? We want to make the most stable radical possible. And the most stable radical that we can make as we break the pi bond. Most stable radical possible um, after pi bond is broken. So our pi bond connects a primary carbon to a secondary carbon. And so we look at this and say, where do we want the radical to go? The secondary carbon is gonna be the more stable position. So what we're going to do is this radical is gonna come in we're going to use one of these electrons to add to that radical, and the other electron is going to go to the secondary position here. We're making a secondary radical, and we're putting the bromine on the primary position. Right? So when we break the pi bond, this is very much like um, when we break the pi bond to add hydrogen to it, and if you treat it with strong acid, right? If you add H plus to an alkene, what do you do? You add the hydrogen to the less substituted position, you put the carbocation on the more substituted position. We're doing the exact same thing here, only the difference is we're doing it as a radical and we're adding bromine instead of hydrogen, right? So instead of adding the hydrogen first, in this case, we're adding the bromine first. 
And the upshot of that is, is that the bromine goes in the less substituted position because we want to generate our radical on the more substituted position. Okay, so then that radical will, uh, oops, will react with another equivalent of HBr. It's going to take the hydrogen. We're going to regenerate a bromine radical. So once again, we're taking the bromine radical as our product, and that's also our starting material. So we, we have another chain reaction, and we're going to get the hydrogen on the more substituted position. Right. So in the addition of HBr uh, with peroxides, right, the bromine goes on the less substituted position. The hydrogen goes on the more substituted position. Now, right, this is the opposite of what Markovnikov ta taught us. Markovnikov said, always put the hetero atom on the more substituted position, right? Um, this doesn't really apply. Markovnikov's rule doesn't apply here because we're not talking about carbocations. Instead, we're talking about radicals. So this still makes sense because we're still going through the most stable radical that we can make. It's just that because we're doing a radical reaction, the bromine radical is the first thing to react. And so the bromine is the first thing added on, which means that our pi bond ends up uh, adding the bromine to the less substituted position because we want to put the radical at the more substituted position. Right? And so the nice thing about radicals, again, we don't have to worry about rearrangement. So uh, you're only ever going to have to worry about what are the substitutions of the two carbons that are part of the double bond, right? So in this case, we only had to worry about this primary carbon and this secondary carbon. The rest of the molecule is pretty irrelevant. As soon as we add a, um, our bromine radical in there, we make a secondary radical, and that one goes and gets a hydrogen to get to our final product. So when you are given conditions like these and asked to just predict the product, right, we know that we add a hydrogen to the more substituted and a bromine to the less substituted position. Right? That's two down, one to go. So we have uh, done addition of HBr, we've done addition of bromine. Next time we're gonna talk about what, we're gonna use a whole new reagent, NBS, and then we're gonna talk about what, how do we use resonance with radicals?